Joystick Justice League to episode four of Breaking News. I'm Mike Fursios. I'm Jim Moore. And we're here to bring you a whole bevy of good indie goodness coming up, especially some AAA gems up in the next year or so. Part one of Breaking News today, Joe, is going to be dedicated to pretty much like platforming and the hardcore 2D side-scrolling games. So let's start off with Shovel Knight. So this is a new one coming out for the PC, uh, also the Nintendo Wii U and the 3DS, as well as the Mac and Linux platform. So what did you see from this trailer, Joe? What can you tell us about Shovel Knight? Well, this looks like a, a good old fashioned side scrolling, you know, 2D action game with, uh, with some interesting gameplay elements. I mean, uh, you're not, uh, your, your weapon is a shovel. Yes. So, so not only is it an offensive weapon, but it's a defensive weapon, but you can also use it there's also some other elements of uh, you know making your way through the environment, creating some new paths, uh, some mean kind of attacks like a pull kind of shovel attack to only attack enemies to to work your way down through the environment and whatnot. So. Yeah, that that pull attack, you're mm -hmm. seeing that come back into the mainstream again. Like this, this immediately makes me think of Ducktales remastered and the original Ducktales. Pretty much any of those Capcom platformers from back in the day. This really is a love letter to like the 8-bit. Capcom-esque platformer, so you know elements of Castlevania, you got elements of Mega Man here, but especially that Pogo attack which you saw come back in Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, DuckTales, coming back into here, really showing you how how intricate the level design is here. I think that's really the highlight of this, like kind of like games like Rayman Legends, where it's really about you know enemies being in the right place. Yeah, it's and some really cool bosses. It's just it's 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 very uh, like you said, it's very much an homage to, to that, that that style of game. Yeah, definitely something that both hardcore and casual platform fans Absolutely. can get into. Um, beautiful retro art, like again, like those those yeah. those bosses are straight out of those old Capcom NES games, where it's just like big bright colors. Um, you know, so a lot lots of fun. It's like if you're into that, like again, those like those hardcore well-tuned, well-structured platformers. I don't think you can go wrong uh, here. That one is coming from Yacht Club Games. So this is uh, their first game. Again, coming to all PC platforms, including Mac Linux, Wii U and 3DS, but not Xbox or PlayStation. So, yeah, interesting it's, one, it's, yeah. It's a, 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 another uh, good game I, I like seeing uh, coming out on, on uh, the Wii U and the 3DS. Yeah, you know, so this is, uh, this is one of those things that the Wii U really needs. I think this is gonna be a very strong indie game, and the fact that it's not going to competing platforms could make this like a really cool console exclusive. Yeah, and really cool move with uh, Nintendo starting to, to have a few of these indies, and uh, I'm hoping to see more of that. You really need that. I mean, there was the reveal recently that the Wii U is getting a lot more indie stuff. Um, it was troubling to see that there wasn't a lot of attention being paid to Nintendo's platforms by the indies, but slowly we're still seeing cool stuff like this. In addition to, you know, Treasure Knots mm -hmm. and Scram Kitty, you know, it, the Wii U is gonna have its own little ecosystem as well, so I'm really excited about that. The next game we're gonna talk about is kind of like this, but taken to an even more hardcore level. This one is called Rogue Legacy. So a lot of chatter about this one. It's coming to the PC, but also it's already out for PC. It's made a bit of wave. It's made some waves, but now it's coming to the PS4 and Vita. So um, how's this like Shovel Knight? Shovel Knight, how's it different, Joe? Uh, it's similar in kind of the look and game play wise, but but taken to that much more of a hardcore core kind of level. Like it really does feel like a. Like a 2D Dark Souls kind of game, big time with skill trees and and character development and, and leveling up and whatnot. It's it's definitely like Shovel Knight, but taking up a few more notches. I'd say it's less about the platforming, but and this time more about your skill in battle. That that twitchy kind of Ghosts and Goblins. That's like really Ghosts and Goblins brought to like the the the, the new generation. Um, definitely, I'd say like like Shovel Knight in some respects, but this is gonna go much more hardcore territory. The boss fights gonna be more badass. There's skill trees, so there's a lot uh, of moves you're gonna have to learn, techniques. Uh, there's a, there's a, and it's procedurally generated, so it's all random. Like it's Metroidvania style, yeah. but it's it's always a new way of playing. It. And also, classes. and also a cool thing, uh, sort of in the in the vein of uh, uh, Infinity Blade, that even mm -hmm. when you die, that's not the end. You're it's almost like a, like a Kind of sort of like a blow line, like your a genealogy, your, yeah. Your, your descendant kind of carries over the skills and, and uh, abilities that you've already developed, and then continues on. Right, but in a sense that you're you're also going to pass along random genetic traits to your offspring. So maybe your next playthrough you'll be colorblind. You'll play it in black and white, or you'll have gigantism, where you'll be like this huge character. Yeah. Uh, there's so many. Or even the Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Yes, so you're going to be a flatulent hero. Kind of in there as well. Yeah, so the game that doesn't always take itself too seriously, but yeah. I think for, again, like for fans of like Dark Souls, 
Ghosts and Goblins, those hardcore roguelikes are really going to sink their teeth into this. Like, so again, this one's coming from Cellar Games. Again, it's already out on PC via Steam as of June 27th, but it is coming to the PS4 and Vita consoles, so you can sink your teeth in this one very soon. Uh, coming up next, a game that you recently bought mm -hmm. called Foul Play from publisher Devolver Digital, developer Mediatonic Games. This one, um, tell us about this, Joe. You've actually had some hands-on experience with this. I've had already played the PC version. Know, once again, Devolver Digital. Yes. You've become a major player in the indie game industry, almost kind of creeping close to the, the AAA kind of stats. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I picked this up uh, on uh, Steam the other day and uh, started playing it. And, and this is uh, sort of in the line of like Puppeteer, you know, of, of where, you're, where it's, it's 2D, well, 3D kind of side scrolling, but uh, the cool thing about it is, is, that, uh, is that it's like you're performing sort of like a play in front of people. Exactly. And, and, and by, by doing combos and keeping things going, there's like a there's like a crowd comes like an applause meter kind of a thing going on to where the, that you have to keep going, otherwise the, the crowd will start to boo you. Sort of kind of like rock band guitar list kind of thing where you have to keep the performance up, otherwise game's over. That's right. I think this is something that the puppeteer from from Japan Studio for the PS3 it touched upon. Like it had the crowd reacting to whatever you did something, but it felt very scripted, very candid. It was more about just bringing to the atmosphere of you sitting along and watching this show with somebody else. Whereas foul play, like you're saying, it's more interactive. Like you have to put on a show, not like for for the people watching this, this virtual audience. And that's really interesting because it forces you to learn a whole bunch of techniques and brings it into games like Deem like like sorry like Devil May Cry or or Bayonetta where like you said like your your grade at the end of the level really is based on how well you put on a show not only for the virtual audience but maybe the audience who's watching you actually play this game on say Twitch TV or yeah. something so makes me think of Castle Crashers. Yes, it definitely it definitely has a it's it's. It, it, it's along that same kind of vein, same kind of a look, and, and it also it's not uh, you're, you're also uh, d developing new abilities. It's actually some pretty cool ones where you're, you parry in midair and you take the guy and throw them into uh, maybe the boss you're fighting and there are other enemies. So, so you're, you're building yourself up as well. Yeah, and that's what I, I think a way of getting outside of the crypt the critique against you know these these side scrolling beat em ups is that is often the critique that they're repetitive and I think that this is anything but I think the fact that you, again you're leveling up you're getting new abilities you can chain them together into these insane combos really keeps it fresh and, and again this the, the whole puppet show vibe is something new I, I like puppeteer I, I like where it was going but I think it could have done so much more and I think foul play is addressing where puppeteer could have gone like you said the big thing is with the audience interaction and really bringing you into this. This performance. So that's again coming from Mediatonic, Devolver Digital for the platforms of this one's coming to PC 360 and it, well, it's already up for PC 360 coming soon to the PS4 and Vita. So, uh, staying in the platforming uh, territory, this one is actually coming out for the 3DS and only for the 3DS. Mm -hmm. This one's known as Azure Striker Gunvolt. Okay, so this is coming from the, ma the makers of the Mega Man uh, Zero series and the upcoming Mighty Number no. 9, which has got the buzz of the internet, which is essentially a Mega Man, but not made by Capcom. So, what, do you, what did you see from Azure uh, Striker Gunvolt? This is just a, a good Japanese anime style Side scrolling action game. Right? Yes. Right over the top, tons of action going on. Rock and roll ninja action. Absolutely. Yeah. Like pure Japanese style. Oh, absolutely. What yeah. games does this remind you of, Joe? Oh, it, it's it, it definitely has that that, uh, that that Mega Man vibe to it. But I mean, just uh, every kind of kick-ass kind of side scrolling kind of game is immediately. You immediately think of that when you, when you see those games. Specifically, like the Treasure 16 bit and 32 oh, yeah. bit era games like Gunstar Heroes, yeah. uh, Guardian Heroes, Astro Boy for the Game Boy Advance, like just like explosions everywhere, fantastic retro pixel art, a great sense of speed and, and coolness. Just like Foul Play, the fact that you've got all these different attacks that you can chain together to really put on a show for people, and like, we, like the Shovel Knight epic boss battles. Yes, absolutely. Which, which is really the heart of what makes any great speed-based action platformer. Yeah, tons of like lightning attacks and things just taking over the screen. I mean, it's just it's it, it's uh, kind of like similar to like Bayonetta. Yes. Like, uh, but uh, no, not a three D look to it. But I mean, just it does, just tons of action kind of going so on. So much going on, yeah. twitchy. Just just so many ways to express yourself in battle. And, and I like the fact that this is coming out on three DS because that really does again push some more attention 
in, in Nintendo's favor. You know, you're not going to be able to cop out and get this on Steam or Mac. You you actually have to go out and buy a 3DS. And this again, this is coming from the Mega Man developers. You know, the people who are working on Mighty Number no. Nine, which is again another game that I'm really excited about. We we don't really have too much footage to show you yet, but I'm sure you've heard about this. It's on Kickstarter. It's going to like every platform knowing a man. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of cool stuff. And to kind of wrap up this part one of Joystick Justice League's breaking news episode four uh, platforming section. We're getting into a game called Aztez, mm -hmm. which is coming for PC, Mac, Linux, PS4, Xbox One, Wii U, and Vita. Okay, so Joe, what's what's Aztez? This is basically, it's another size cooling game, but some unique elements to it. First off, it's in black and white. Yes. With the exception of the blood being spilled. Yes, very cool. And also taking place in like the ancient Aztec civilization, which a unique element. You don't see that that period being addressed too often, and you know it's it's going with our our our, our roundtable podcast recently about stereotypes, talking about how games are always set in like fantasy, medieval realms, or sci-fi. I like the fact that they're trying to approach different areas of history. At first, you might think, okay, this is like God of War side scrolling, but it's not. It's not just a beat 'em up. What else is going on here? Some so? strategy game elements too, where you yeah. can't conquer certain areas, which is. Uh, and with the Aztec Empire, which, you know, he actually does that just success what they were trying to do. They were trying to take over that area. So it's not only, it's got some multiple elements going on here. Yeah, you know, there, there's a bit of act razor in here. There's a bit of God of War. Like you yeah, said, there's, a, there's, an, uh, there's an overarching RTS strategy. So, again, if you see the, the trailer for this online, you might think, okay, this is just a cool combo-based brawler with lots of blood and gore. But really, th there's a thinking element to this. And, and that's why I like this. It's, it's, it seems like a very ambitious indie game that's trying to be bigger than, than it's, it's, it's it, the sum of its parts. So um, I'm really looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. This is coming out in quarter two of 2014, again for multi, multiple platforms, and uh, from Team Colorblind. So mm -hmm. that's the name of the developer for this one. Stay tuned for more breaking news. Uh, after the break, we're gonna come back with some uh, spacey kind of stuff and some simulations, so uh, lots of fun stuff. Mike Frusios, Joe Moore. Stay tuned to the Joystick Justice League. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 